Hello, my name is Ross Clark. I'm a medical student at the Warren Albert Medical School, and I would like to thank the Computational Data Neuroscience Symposium for the opportunity to present our research with Dr. Stephen Toms and Dr. Robert Weil at the Rhode Island Hospital on disparities in brain tumor craniotomy outcomes for dual eligible patients. We have no disclosures to report. Dual eligible patients represent a unique group of individuals duly enrolled in both Medicare and Medicaid. To this date, there are over 11 million dual eligible patients in the United States. Qualifying for both Medicare and Medicaid, dual eligibles have complex care needs and may face financial stressors as well as those related to health. 61% of dual eligibles are at least 65 years or old, and one-third of those younger than 65 report a disability status. Care for this patient population has been characterized with greater costs incurred by group members. One study reported costs for dual eligible beneficiaries as twice that of Medicare only. The instances of chronic diseases and high mortality rates are characteristics of this group. Previous studies have characterized dual eligibles having less favorable outcomes following spine, peripheral nerve, joint replacement, and carotid endectorectomy. However, there has not been studies regarding dual eligibles within the field of neurosurgery. Our study looks at the impact of dual eligible status on perioperative brain tumor craniotomy outcomes. Using the national inpatient sample between 2002 and 2011, we collected admissions data for supertensorial craniotomy using diagnosis codes and procedural codes. Admissions for individuals younger than 18 and those undergoing non-primary or non-supertensorial craniotomy were excluded. Dual eligible outcomes were compared to four reference groups, Medicare only, Medicaid only, private insurance, and self-pay. 2011 was the last year the NIS reported more than one insurance type with admissions data. Multivariate regression assessed associations between the dual eligible status and perioperative outcomes. We controlled for confounding variables related to demographics, severity of conditions, the case characteristics, and hospital categorization. Odds ratios were reported for binary outcomes, and beta coefficients representing percentage changes were reported for continuous outcomes. There were 96,094 admissions from 38 states that reported more than one insurance source over the 10-year period. There were 2,248 dual eligibles comprising 2.3% of admissions for brain tumor craniotomy. Dual eligibles were more likely to be non-white, 27.6%, than Medicare patients at 10.9%. In addition, you can see the admissions data over the studies observed time course. Assessing the association between dual eligibles and the perioperative outcomes, dual eligibles had lower mortality than Medicare and self-pay admissions. However, dual eligibles were more likely to have a discharge disposition other than home and a greater in-hospital complication rate than the other reference groups. Dual eligibles also had longer lengths of stay than all groups except Medicaid following brain tumor craniotomy. There were no differences in hospital costs for dual eligibles when compared to the four reference groups. Dual eligibles had disproportionate rates of adverse outcomes following brain tumor craniotomy, while dual eligibles had greater complication rates, length of stay, and unfavorable discharge dispositions Dual eligibles had lower in-hospital mortality rates than Medicare and self-pay patients. The latter outcome being unexpected given the complex care needs of many dual eligibles. The mortality findings could be explained through the mortality being limited to inpatient deaths and deaths occurring outside the hospital post-surgery are not being reported in a national inpatient sample. Continued research is needed to further address these apparent differences in outcomes and to further parse out sources of disparities. This will help address how to structure improvement in care guidelines and coordination for dual eligible patients undergoing neurosurgical procedures. I am very thankful for the mentorship from Dr. Toms and Dr. Weil and the contributions from my fellow authors. And thank you for watching our presentation on the disparities and brain tumor craniotomy with dual eligible patients. I'm pleased to take any further questions at Ross underscore Clark at brown.edu. Thank you very much.